so pages 14 and 15. Uh, section 1.1, you needed to um, correct the plural nouns, and then if there were any changes to the sentence then to make the sentence make sense, you needed to do that, okay? Um, so, number, actually these were just plural nouns. It's 1.2 where you correct the sentence. So number one, attorneys is, um, I'm just going to spell them too so that, because that's kind of what you need to know. A-T-T-O-R-N-E-Y-S. Hobbies, H-O-B-I-E-S. Number two, trout, just stays the same. Lucy, do you have this? any of this done? Yeah. Okay, okay, great. Um, I'll take questions at the end of each section. Number three, boxes, B-O-X-E-S, and flies, F-L-I-E-S. Number four, reels, R-E-E-L-S, tackle boxes, B-O-X-E-S. Number five, fish, just stays the same as fish. And lilies, L-I-L-I-E-S. Six, stories, S-T-O-R-I-E-S. And essays, E-S-S-A-Y-S. -S -S um, seven, women, W-O-M-E-N. And men, M-E-N. And eight, parents. Um, with just an S at the end, vocations with an S at the end, and hobbies, H-O-B-B-I-E-S. Okay? Um, questions? Uh, Lucy? Can we do um, fishes too? No, just fish. Bella? Oh, that was two. Number two, trout. Just trout. It just stays the same. Okay, um, Allison. Um, for hobbies, I like I just like accidentally left the I like spot open. So did it count as wrong? So um, basically, when I go around checking, I just give you a completion grade on this. Um, so what I just so I'm not taking it for points of what this is right or wrong. This is for you to practice. And then I give you the correct answers so that you can look at it for the test. Um, so just put the right, basically just write it correctly and you don't take off any points for it, okay? So for things that are incorrect, um, I should have explained that already. Yeah, you don't need to take any points. You're not getting, getting a score like out of you know 52 or however many it is. You got a score for having it complete and then it's for you to study from, so you just put in the correct answers, okay? All right, any other questions? Any questions about forming plural words? Bella? Uh, why would an essay, why wouldn't you change the Y in essay to an I? Because it has a vowel in front of it, that within, so when you have a vowel and then a, a Y, you just add S. But if you have a consonant and a Y is when you change the Y to I and add ES. Okay? So, um, because of the A, you keep the Y there. Okay? Um, just like attorneys at the top. Or in number one, I should say. Okay. Um, exercise 1.2, we are doing the same thing, only um, you are changing sentence, the sentence if it needs to be changed in order for it to make sense. Um, so number nine, um, we will celebrate their birthdays. So you would have changed it to like their birthdays with an S at the end of 
birthdays or you could say our birthdays okay because because um, his birthday doesn't make sense if you change it to plural birthdays okay all right um, number 10 um, this could stay the same except you would have calves C A L V E S Eleven. Um, this sentence would stay the same, except you would have safes. S A F E S. Um, Thirteen. Um, you would have to take out the A, so you would say. Um, you would just have potatoes, P-O-T-A-T-O-E-S. So it would be mom put potatoes into the soup. Fourteen. Um, the sentence would stay the same, except it would be lilies of the valley, L-I-L-I-E-S. Fifteen, you would um, take out the an, and it would be armfuls. I had an I had armfuls of newspapers that had to be delivered. So a r m f u l s. Okay. Um, Sixteen um, would be they brought their portfolios to the meeting, so you would put their, or, um, and it would be portfolios with an S at the end. Okay, 17, would, it would stay the same, only it would be shelves, S-H-E-L-V-E-S. <coughs> Um, 18, that sentence is correct. Scissors stays the same. Um, 19 would just be foxes, <coughs> F-O-X-E-S. And 20, that sentence would stay the same. Deer stays the same when it's plural. Okay, anybody need any repeated or have questions? Bella? 11. 11 um, would be safes, S-A-F-E-S. -E Andrew? 12. 12. Oh, did I skip 12? Yeah. I think I did. I'm sorry about that. Um, 12, just volcanoes would change, so V O L. C A N O E S for volcanoes. Okay, anybody else? Okay, so again, um, well, um, try to remember some of those patterns. Usually you add an S um, if it ends with C H S H um, Z. Um, X or S, then you add E S to change it. Um, nouns ending in a vowel and then a Y, you just add S. Um, words ending with a consonant and then a Y, you change the Y to I and add E S. Um, we have those irregular ones like woman is women and ox is oxen, okay? Um, person is people. Same thing with O's. If you have, um, it, it works the same as the Y's. So if you have a vowel and then an O, you just add S. 
if you have a consonant and an O, you um, add ES. You don't change it to I, but you add ES. Um, many Fs become Vs at the Fs at the end. Not all of them, but there are some, like calf and leaf. Those become calves and leaves. Um, all right, and remember those compound words? The S goes at the end, like merry-go-rounds. And um, um, hyphenated words, you add the S to the principal word or the main word, okay? All right, so we'll move on to 1.3, which is subjects and subject complements. So 21, soccer, is a subject complement. 22, players, is a subject. 23, uncle, is a subject. 24, athletes, subject complement. 25, Beckham, subject. 26, day, subject complement. Any questions or repeats on those? So remember, a subject comes toward the beginning of the sentence um, in front of the verb. It is who or what the sentence is about. Um, the subject complement um, comes toward the end of the sentence. It follows a linking verb. You find the subject and then a linking verb, and then you ask what to find the subject complement. And if it renames, it's, if it's the same thing as the subject, then it's a subject complement. Okay? All right. Um, section 1.4. Um, here you're identifying whether the words are direct object, indirect object, object of a preposition, or object complement. Okay, so 27, our town, is a direct object. 28, cast, is an indirect object. And tips is a direct object. 29, performance is an object of a preposition. 30, um, Marnie is the direct object. An actress is an object complement. Um, 31, director is an object complement. 32, manager is an object complement. 33, um, trophies is a direct object. And efforts is an object of a preposition. 34, happiness is an object of a preposition. And faces is an object of a preposition. Uh, Bella, 31, director is an object complement. So I'm just going, Joey. What was 34? 34, both of them are objects of prepositions. So I'm just going to kind of, um, when you're doing this part on um, the, the test, Basically, I would um, I would go through it step by step, and I would first look to see if you have a direct object, and if usually it's like tell them what the italicized word is. Um, first, I look to see if it's a direct object. If, it, if the italicized word is not a direct object, then I would look to see if it's an indirect object. <laughs> if it's not that, I would go with ob check out object complement. And if it's none of those, object of a preposition, I would go through step by step because 
first of all, if you don't have a direct object in a sentence at all, so I would first see if you have a direct object. If you don't have a direct object in a sentence, you cannot have an indirect object and you cannot have an object complement. So if you don't have a direct object, chances are the italicized word is going to be an object of a preposition, right? So then you can just test the object of a preposition. But um, try to remember your formulas. So um, you find the sub, you always first find the subject, and then you're gonna, on this part, then you're gonna look for an action verb, and then you're going to ask what or who. And don't put any words in between there. Don't put to or for or around or any words. Just that, if, because if you put a word in there, you're going to probably be able to come up with an answer if you put a word in between there, and it could be wrong. So that will be your direct object. So if the italicized word ends up being this word, then you know it's a direct object. If it's not that, then you're, but it has a direct object, then go to the next one. Check out the indirect object. You're going to do the exact same thing. And this is, so you're finding your direct object. And then you're asking, to whom or what, or for whom, or what, that's going to equal, and then this has to be, remember, over here, in between the action verb and the direct object to be an indirect object. So let's say you have a direct object and the italicized word is in front of it, chances are it's going to be an indirect object, but you should still try to test the formula, okay? Let's say if, if the italicized word comes after the direct object, chances are it's going to be an object complement. So, because indirect objects only come before the direct object, object complements only come after the direct object. And the way you find an object complement is you ask what, and then it's going to be after the direct object, okay? And then object of the preposition, uh, what was the other one you guys told me? I said the dog ran, blank, the crowd. <coughs> so prepositions are anything that fits in here. <coughs> crowd would be the object of the preposition. An object of a preposition ends, um, ends the prepositional phrase, okay? So, I should come over and put that over there, too. Okay? Okay, I'll come and do that a little bit later. Okay, any questions on how to find those? be a positive and punctuate them if needed. So 35, the positive phrase is cuddly and playful mammals, and it should have commas around it, so after um, otters and after mammals should be commas. 36, a small Alaskan town on the sound is the positive phrase. And you should you do need a comma after Valdez. 
37 Exxon Valdez gives me a positive, and you do not need commas around that. That one is restrictive, so I should say the first two were non-restrictive. So non-restrictive has commas. Um, restrictive does not have commas. Okay. Um, number 38, the positive phrase is huge ocean going vessels and it is non-restrictive, so you put commas after super tankers and after vessels. Um, 39, um, a mass of rock is the positive, and you need a comma after reef. It is non-restrictive. 40, a large gooey puddle of oil is the positive phrase. It is non-restrictive, so a comma after slip and a comma after oil. 41, a marine biologist is the positive phrase and it is non-restrictive, so you need a comma after crane and after biologist. 42, people who can donate their time is the positive phrase, and it is non-restrictive. You need a comma after volunteers. 43, um, there are two positives in different places. One positive is Elizabeth, and the other positive is Lily. And those are restrictive, so you do not put commas around those. Okay. Any, Bella? 41. 41. A marine biologist is the positive phrase, non restrictive with commas after crane and after biologist. Any, Andrew? 36. A small Alaskan town on the sound is the positive phrase. It's non-restrictive, so put a comma after Valdez. Okay, anybody else? So a positives, remember, they are like an interruption in the sentence. Like you kind of interrupt your main thoughts and you add a little bit of information. Sometimes, um, so they are nouns and they follow the noun they're giving more information about. Okay. Um, if you need it in the sentence in order, to, in order for it to make sense, in order to know what you're talking about, then that's restrictive and you do not put commas around it. So it's restricted in the sentence. Okay, if it is not needed in the sentence to make sense, you're just like adding something, then it's non-restrictive and you do put commas around it. Okay, any other questions on that? Okay, um, 1.6. These are correcting possessive nouns. So it will tell you if it should be plural or not after it. Plural, singular or plural. So 44 would be teens with an just an apostrophe at the end. 45, sister-in-laws with an apostrophe S after law. 46, men's with an apostrophe S at the end. 47, Carlos's would be um, apostrophe S at the end, so it would be C A R L O S apostrophe S. Okay. 48, brothers.
with an apostrophe S at the end. 49 would be Mr. Saunders's, so S-A-U-N-D-E-R-S, apostrophe S. Okay. 50 puppies would have just an apostrophe at the end of puppies. Um, 51 children's would be apostrophe S after children. And 52 bosses would be B O S S apostrophe S. Maddie. 44 um, teens with just an S after the S T E E N S apostrophe. Okay, Greta? 45 sister in laws with an L A W apostrophe S. Okay, anybody else? So remember, for apostrophes, always use apostrophe S unless the word fits. Two has two criteria. The word is plural and it already ends in S. Then you would just add an apostrophe. Okay, but it has to be both. It already has to be plural and it already has to end in S. Otherwise, add an apostrophe S, okay? All right, any questions or anything you want me to review? No? Okay, so the test on that is tomorrow after spelling test, okay? We will do that.